Welcome to another episode of Ladies Talking Business, a business lifestyle show where we break down the concept of business to its simplest form. I am Marimi Akon. On today's episode, we will be discussing closing the milk consumption gap in Nigeria with our guest Omolara Olayinka Lawrence. Omolara is a social entrepreneur passionate about building sustainable growth in the lives of women and youth. She is a co-founder at Impact Resource and Incubation Center, an impact-driven academy which reaches out, trains, mentors, and empowers various categories of women and youth, both online and offline, with a view to bringing out the best in them. She is an economist by profession and a serial entrepreneur with over 15 years experience across roles and industries. She is the founder and CEO of Disney Foods Nigeria, a yogurt manufacturing company. She is a Providus Bank SME ambassador, a Whitefield Foundation and Vastunet grant awardee, a member of the Bodless Trade Network. She leads Africa and AWP Network. She is an alumnus of the Olabisi Onobanja University, Philanthropy University, Enterprise Development Center, and Academy for Women Entrepreneur. Welcome to Ladies Talking Business, Omolara. Thank you for having me. Great. So, milk consumption gap in Nigeria. What are some of the reasons why there's a huge gap? Um... Nigeria is a country that is largely dependent on importation. Okay. And um, we don't have enough supply. Okay. So that is the major reason. And um, the second reason is what I would um, really want to talk about, which is um, the lactose intolerance part of it. Okay. Because a lot of people uh, would also actually want to consume milk, but some of them are not tolerance. Um, the third reason, which is also something we should give attention to, is low per capita income. Um, okay. The global milk consumption, as recommended by WHO, which is the World Health Organization, is 210 liters per person per annum. But in Af Africa, the average we have is just 40 liters. And um, the alarming part of it is eight liters in Nigeria per person per annum. So um, th these three reasons are the major reasons we can really um, pinpoint for this consumption gap. In Let's Nigeria. talk about the per capita bit. That's okay. quite interesting. How yeah. is it a factor? It is. It's just. It has to do with affordability. Okay. How how many Nigerians can afford to buy a thing of milk? Mm -hmm. As in, I mean daily, um, weekly, not to talk of consuming it, consuming it daily. Because if you have to break down the 210 liters in two days, we are talking about you are supposed to take at least 500 ml per day, minimum. But the affordability is the issue. Okay. Yeah. The standard of living. Mm. I mean, isn't that why they are like sachet milks, which are supposed to be cheaper? Yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people are consuming such a milk, but they are still not meeting up to the quantity that is recommended. Ah, uh, okay, I get it. Mm. Okay, so how can we bridge this gap in Nigeria? Uh, it has to go back to government policies. We need to um, across the dairy value chain, starting from the inputs, uh, supply value chain, to the production, which is the on farm to the um, processing value chain, distribution and the likes. We need government intervention. To so intervene how? Yeah, like I'll pick it, I'll pick uh, like the first three um, value chain. Okay. The import sub, input supply, I believe um, we need subsidy. We need um, government to come in. Yeah, th there is subsidy presently, but we don't have as much as we should. So we need government policy such, in such a way that there will be, um, there will be affordability for the headsmen to buy the input. We are talking about vaccination for the um, cattle, talking about veterinary um, services, the feeds these cattle we eat. You know, we need government to intervene and substitute some of these 
products and services needed at that value chain. If we come to the on-farm, we encourage um, Edsman to um, go into artific artificial insemination. This helps the quality of the, of the cattle and the milk that is produced eventually. Some of these farmers need capacity building. Some of them need funding to do all of this. And if you come to the uh, processing value chain, which is where Disney Foods um, plays, you know, we need coaching storage. We need funding. We need all, everything has to come back to government intervention in terms of policies that will create an enabling environment for the dairy sector. Okay, so there seem to be um, a lot of funding opportunities available for um, small businesses in the mm -hmm. agro sector. Yes. But how easy has it been for you to access these so-called funds? Yeah, I believe um, accessing funding has to do with capacity building for okay. small business owners. Okay. Yeah, the fundings are there, but they are not just going to give it to mm. any any to, to just anybody. You know, so we encourage small business owners to build capacity, mm. put structures into their business. Your bookkeeping, your record keeping is very important because before anybody releases fund, um, funding to you, they want to see how far you have gone. What are your plans? Do you have a growth plan? Do you have a five-year vision? So um, accessing funding, this, I can really uh, pin it to building capacity. Um, from the business owner side. So the fundings think, are there. So do you think once you can build capacity, you have yes. a greater chance yes, of accessing Yes, and put structures in your business. Okay, mm. okay. So earlier on, you spoke about lactose intolerance as one of the factors. Let's yes. talk about it. What does it really mean? What are the symptoms? Okay, lactose is um, the sugar that is derived from milk. Mm. And then... Um, the enzyme, enzyme that is responsible for um, breaking down the sugar is called lactase. Okay. I know it's produced by the small intestine, but there are times people's um, metabolism, you just you see that um, there's a kind of um, deficiency from the small intestine. And you know, that lactase is not just strong enough to break down the sugar in the lactose. Mm. Don't forget, lactose is the milk you derive from milk. Okay. And just like you say, fructose is the sugar is the sugar is the sugar you derive from fruits. Okay. Fru uh, fruto fructose is the sugar you derive from fruits, as lactose is derived from milk. milk. So you need that enzyme called lactase to break it down. So when there is a de deficiency from the small intestine, there will, there will be a malad absorption from the body. And then, of course, you start having symptoms like um, um, heart burn, okay. because the body has not absorbed the milk. Mm -hmm. um, symptoms like bloating, um, mm -hmm. indigestion generally, and it actually leads to diarrhea and um, a more serious um, ailment. So it is when the body cannot break down the sugar found in milk. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. We'll talk more Thank about you. this shortly. <laughs> we will be back for more conversations with our guest after the break. I'm still here with Omolara Olainka Lawrence, CEO Disney Foods Nigeria. So before we went on break, we were talking about um, lactose intolerance, the dairy industry, and all of that. Yes. So I am lactose intolerant. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some healthy non-dairy options? Yeah, um, we have plant-based um, milk, and we have animal-based milk. A lot of people that are lactose intolerant, they are just um, they are just intolerant to animal milk, mama, any milk produced from mammals, goat milk, sheep milk, cow milk. So, but the good part of it, and that's why we are coming in as a company to provide solutions to lactose intolerance. You know, we have um, dairy products and we have non-dairy products. Okay. We have um, yogurt produced from almond, from soya milk, from tiger nut milk, um, from rice milk. 
these are non, uh, these are alternatives to um, dairy milk. Dairy milk. So they're actually non-dairy products. Okay, so yeah. on this in, in this industry, the dairy industry and mm -hmm. all that, what are the potential profitable um, business opportunities um, that you think a lot of Nigerians should know about or can go into? So it could be for dairy, it could be for non-dairy products. Yeah, um, like I said, there there's so much to do on the value chain in the um, Nigerian dairy sector. We can look at backward integration. You don't have to be a processor. In the dairy sector, you can just be selling inputs. There's so much money in it. Selling input. what inputs. Inputs, yeah. Okay. Um, the headers, they need feeds. Okay. You can just be a supplier of feeds. Okay. And um, veterinary services. Some people okay. are into artificial insemination. In the processing value chain, you can, you can make available cold chain storage um, um, services and um, logistics distribution. You know, so there's so much we can do. And when you come to the processing value chain, you can produce milk, mm -hmm. cheese, mm -hmm. yogurt, like I'm doing, <laughs> butter, and the whole lot that can be done to make money. Some are into just trainings, you uh, know, okay. training people on how to do these things, you know, raw material sales. And there's a whole lot. It's, 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 um, a booming industry. industry. Yeah. But it's, I always find that it's difficult to find non-dairy options in Nigeria. That's why we are here. And even, <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> and even when you find, they are mm. extremely expensive. Yes. Plant-based um, dairy um, yogurts from my end is like times three of the dairy. Why is that? Dairy. Because uh, the, it's, it's, it's simply the cost of production. Okay. How much it takes to produce one liter of non-dairy products can actually produce up to five liters. Because if you are trying to extract milk from, let's say, almond, everybody knows how expensive almond is mm. in the market, especially because it is an imported product, basically. You know, so the cost of production of non-dairy products is the main reason why it is expensive. Then the expertise. Producing non-dairy yo um, um, yogurts <laughs> is not, is not um, a child's play. It, it requires a lot of training and expertise, like I just said. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so how can this sector, the dairy industry, how can it help to further boost the Nigerian economy? What are the things we need to do right or things that we've not started doing that we need to do that can help? Yeah, um, I believe we should look inwards. Okay. The capital flights we are experiencing in Nigeria based on importation of milk, can, we can save the money here. The money can just be um, moving around here. You know, when we look inwards to, we have large So you um, think we have what it takes? Of, yes, we have large expanse of land. And we really need to look into technological advancements in the dairy sector. We can't afford to allow our cattle moving around the city. We need to establish ranches. You know, when you look at a particular region where importation of milk um, is coming into, you know, we need to see how ranches can be established because it is very expensive to bring in milk from the northern part to um, the southern parts. Even within Nigeria? It's yes, difficult. it's very expensive. Okay. And sometimes you don't, the, 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 uh, the cold chain um, storage can fail along the line. So by the time they are delivering to you, it's no longer useful to you. So why can't we have ranches in the southwest? Why can't we have more cattle also here? So in and the, the southwest, the, where, where are the places you think are good incubations or, or good places where... Of course, La them? Lagos is largely populated. So we are looking at maybe any other southwest states aside from Lagos. Okay. At least for um, proximity, mm -hmm. logistics, is an ease of doing business. Mm -hmm. So I feel um, we should establish ranches across okay. the country. So you were giving us some points on how you think we can further boost the Nigerian economy. You so said we should look inwards. We sh yes, we should look inwards. So as someone that's been in business yeah. and is interested in business um, mm -hmm. for a while, what are some key lessons Doing, doing business in Nigeria has taught you? Wow. 
resilience and resilience and resilience. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you come into business and you are like, oh, you've been to a business school, you've been taught everything that you need to know to make a business run successfully. You have passion, you have vision, you know, and you come into business and, you know, it's just like a different ballgame. Mm. You know, you have issues with... Um, getting hiring the right staff mm. you have and you, you just feel like but because you are passionate about building something everybody anybody can just wake up and say i want to relocate abroad but i'm so passionate about um, building something here in nigeria can we have coca-cola here in nigeria you know businesses that will transcend generation can we build mm. can small businesses you know build something of lasting value you know, so it has taught me resilience. Sometimes you have to be your own accountant because somebody wakes up one morning <laughs> without, without proud um, notice, mm -hmm. notice and he's just resigning. And, you know, it has taught me resilience. It has taught me resilience. That's so you just have to keep going. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I know you're in, you're, you're in the dairy um, business, yes. um, producing yogurt and all of yes. that. Tell us some interesting facts about yogurt production or about yogurt. <laughs> the, the list is actually <laughs> so long, uh, but I'll pick like the um, the best three I think you should know and then the public are there. Um, yogurt is a probiotic. Yogurt is not just popular because it is tasty, it's fashionable because of people. Once I'm carrying yogurt, I think I'm in another class. <laughs> you know, it's not like, you know. But yogurt is a probiotic. Okay. A lot of people that understand this part of yogurt, they take it so that they don't have to take antibiotics. Because mm. a probiotic fortifies your body against sickness rather than falling ill and taking antibiotics. So we should yes. hop on yogurt. Yes, you, <laughs> okay. need, to, you need to consume more of it okay. because it builds your immune system. Okay. And, uh, you know, it's very good for bone formation in children and also in elderly people. You know, it contains um, calcium and protein, which is very, very good for um, semen production, okay. <laughs> you know, so people that are actually um, looking at fertility should also consume it. Oh. Um, both male and female? Both male and female. Right. It's very good. Okay. The list is actually in... Uh, uh, please, I want to hear more because I'm <laughs> learning. <laughs> you are learning. No, it aids digestion also. Okay. It aids digestion. So sometimes when you have constipation and you are not lactose intolerant, just consume it. It aids... Um, Digestion. So for those who are lactose um, intolerant, uh, if mm. they take the, the other substitute, yes. will that help yes, with di uh, indigestion as yes. well? Yes. So what's the production process like? How long does it take you to you know finish? Mm. It depends on um, what the taste you want to achieve. Okay. Um, Averagely, between 8 to 10 hours. If okay. you want a very creamy yogurt, you are good to go. But if you want the tangy, the sour taste, mm -hmm. you, could, you could go as long as 12 to 15 hours, you know, okay. for the fermentation process. But the bottling and the um, other part of it, give or take, 10 to 12 hours for me, it's okay. Okay, so mm. with the high, um, with the inflation rate in Nigeria now, Mm. How have you been able to stay in business, especially having to get meal <laughs> for your production? How have you been able to navigate this? Water? It's so crazy that um, the price of milk has doubled in the past six months. Mm. Well, I'll take um, a carton of milk. Where it used to be 8600 now it is 14,600. So it's wow. almost double, like let's say 80% um, increment, you know, um, and the price keeps going up, you know. So what we have been able to do is to cut down a bit on our profits wow. and also increase our price, you know, in such a way that, and we didn't increase price at once, you know. It took us like a month. We're okay. increasing it like every two weeks. So we increased twice. But you know, we didn't bring it. Didn't bring the price increase in just so, so that our customers would be able to. And we made sure we didn't drop our standard. Mm. You know, so yeah. once the standard is still there, people will be willing to pay more. Amazing. But just before mm. I let you go, what business advice would you have for other small businesses um, doing on doing business in Nigeria? Mm. <laughs> I I usually say it. Um, I can um, caption it into three Ds. 
you know, mm -hmm. determination, dedication, and um, discipline. You need to be determined because <laughs> business is not a um, bed of roses. Mm -hmm. um, that's why tenacity, of course, I mentioned resilience, resilience the other time. Yeah. You have to be determined. I'm going into this and, you know, I'm not going to be bothered. I'm not going to be deterred by whatever challenges I I, you have to keep innovating. That, that is still part of the determination part. So you have to be able to navigate your way around. And you know, I mentioned dedication. You have to be dedicated. Don't say because you are the boss, you resume anytime. You take money from the business and you have to be dedicated, you know, and you have to live by example. You know, your uh, staff has to see that dedication in you so that they can mm -hmm. follow suit. And discipline. And discipline, I think that's what I just mentioned, it, which is you have to be strict with um, how the companies, you don't mix family with um, business. business. You, don't, um, you don't put um, companies' fun, um, funds in personal accounts, you need to be disciplined in the way you do things. And of course, it still comes, comes back to you being a good example to your staff. Because once you are dedicated, once you are determined, and they are seeing that you are disciplined, because they are, they are your first customer, your staff mm. is actually your first customer. So it, once you live by these examples um, as a business owner, um, the sky is not even the limit, it's the starting point. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for watching this episode of Ladies Talking Business. Do join us this same time next week for another episode. And don't forget to follow us on Plus TV Africa Lifestyle on YouTube to catch up with our programs. I am Morimi Akonwo. See you next week.